Hi friends. I was too busy transplanting out plants and giving plants away and sowing seeds and before I knew it you kind of get um, you lose sight of certain things when you're too busy doing other things. So um, I kind of let this part of my garden go wild while the other portions I was you know trying to maintain and trying to sow seeds and keep the seeds um the seedlings alive so this is quite embarrassing this whole garden bed here has been abandoned so the fennel is going wild wild it's like tall it's almost as tall as the sunflower which is amazing i guess it just keeps making these um next nodes and it gets taller and taller but the leaves are very um very feathery very lacy like and they smell so good and they're good for your um your innards your gi tract mm. it has a sweet slight licory licorice taste an aroma mmm but right now it's kind of like pretty sweet that was the older leaves and this lighter colored one's the younger leaf so I'm gonna have a taste of that okay so the lighter colored leaves, you don't taste it at first, and then it hits you after. Anyway, it tastes good. I sometimes put it into my um, soups. Um, we got lots of pretty flower umbels to attract bees and stuff. And I don't mind it, honestly. And... I could harvest it and stick it in the coop because it has that licorice smell to ward off critters. The chickens don't really eat it from what I've seen. I've thrown it into their chicken run and they don't, they just kind of kick it around and I don't mind because the smell of it probably wards off other critters. and. It's just a soft bedding for them to be in a soft, clean bedding. Um, I do pull out the stuff that's in the run after they've pooped on it and kicked it around so that I could have free, free soil or compost or fertilizer. So yes, this is all Okinawan spinach that has gone to seed and makes these little seed heads, which I'm trying to collect. And I don't mind the nasturtiums either because I just pull up all these branches and I gather all the seeds. And so I'm only like an eighth of the way through because this is one plant and it's huge. And I guess I just walk past this every day not paying attention um, because I'm transplanting a lot of my seedlings, seedlings into the ground. And... So, and harvesting strawberries every day and golden raspberries. And I, at first I was munching on all the nasturtium blooms and leaves, but I kind of stopped doing that and was too busy. So today I saw this mess. I mean, I opened my eyes. I actually saw this mess. So I collected all these seeds. Now I'm laying them out here so they can dry. And once they're dry, then I can put them in envelopes and then I can share it with friends and family. So what I'm doing is I have been gathering tons of nasturtium seeds and hollyhock seeds and various other seeds. Hi friends, we we're having to sadly harvest all our donut peaches because some squirrels and birds, especially squirrels, are coming around and eating up all our fruit. 
So the ones that have um, holes in them, we're throwing it into our chicken run and the chickens can have at it. And then the rest we're gonna wash up and, and eat fresh. Several of the, pe the donut peaches are sacrificed to the chickens. Rover, uh, as well as some of our watermelon rinds and just greens from our cilantro swiss chard and fennel that we just throw in here and then after a while i'm going to muck out all this stuff and they're going to have nice soil underneath again so we're currently washing the donut peaches the ones that the skin were kind of falling off we're gonna eat those immediately and then these will eat later so all along my enclosure, my garden enclosure, uh, my green beans are starting, my pole beans are starting to grow. And they're winding themselves around the, the wire of the structure. And I've got a little tomato growing right there. This is the black sea man. These poppies are looking gorgeous. I love the way they look, they're so pretty. I'm hoping that the seed heads will drop a bunch of seeds so I can have more. This is the Icelandic variety of poppies. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of jostle this tomato because it has like little flowers. And I'm noticing the, it's three, four, five tomatoes. And one of them is ripe currently. So I'm gonna pull that out. It's a beefsteak variety, however, um, I put it in a small pot, so I don't, I'm hoping that it will grow bigger than just this small size. Let me use my scissors. So I don't know how this is a beefsteak, but that's what it says on the label. Um, I need to find the label, but, oh here it is. Beef steak tomato. So we'll see if they get bigger because I've seen big ones. And this one had one bell pepper. It's making another one. And this one I haven't seen the chilies on the peppers on it. And this one I'm gonna have to harvest all these peppers. This is the dragon roll hot pepper. Ooh, it's a hot one. Okay. It looks like a shishito, but it's actually a spicy one. It's kind of wrinkled like one. So let me harvest those. So I wanted to show that I had thrown some seeds into this pot with my tomato in it. And it is making a ton of plants. I forget what I put in here. We'll find out soon. I thought it was some chili peppers. Maybe some zinnias, I can't remember. Likewise, over here, several chili peppers. Um, I think it's a Thai chili or basil. Same with that bed. I threw some chili pepper seeds, I believe, and they're growing around. So when I water it, I water the center, and then kind of some of the water comes out and trickles over here because chili peppers don't require as much water as tomatoes. And... But if it's basil, basil and tomato go great together as far as watering goes. They have high demands for water. And my tomatoes are growing. I'm so happy. There's one. Let's see. There's another. There's another. Awesome. Hi friends, so this is our first tomato of uh, the year. It's a beefsteak and it's quite firm but it's red. I probably could have waited a couple days but I don't want any critters to get to it before I do. I want to be the one to eat it. So I harvested it and I harvested all these dragon roll peppers. Now I don't know what they taste like. I bought them um, when they were on sale. There were four plants for $10, which was a great deal, especially this uh, in this year, 2023, as 
inflation and everything has made plants the price of plants go up so you could get a plant for nearly five dollars so you know t uh, four plants for ten dollars is not bad at all so I'm gonna give this a taste test it says it's a hot pepper so I'm looking and this is the reddest of them all and I'm gonna take a nibble out of it and I will tell you on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the hottest, what I would rate it as. And 10 being like, well, I'll, I'll just say um, if it's like a jalapeno or like a habanero or hotter than that. So let's see. Mm -hmm. So at first bite, this is the reddest one I found. The end tastes like a bell pepper. Quite bell peppery in taste. Let's get to the seeds because that's where the heat is. Well, right here, um, not the seeds necessarily, but over here, the capsaicin oils are where it's very hot. Hmm. Okay, it's heating up a little more where the seeds are and capsaicin oils. So, um, I forgot how the shishito tastes because I did grow a shishito and this looks very much like a shishito. And the description of a shishito is that it's um, a it's kind of considered a sweet pepper with a tiny hint of spice. And if that's the case, then this, this tastes very much like that. But I thought the shishito was a little milder than this. But this is like um, kind of like a jalapeno amount of spice. So not bad. Kara, can you wash this please? So not bad. So I'm going to, um, so you can stir fry a bunch of these with like say some, um, green, green beans or onions and stuff like that and garlic. It would be so, so good. So I tried to keep these chili peppers warm and tried to cover it and, um, it had started these tiny little sprouts and... Un unfortunately they hung in there but over time they did die because it got too cold because we had extra rains this season and of course when it rains it's really cold and they just didn't make it so then I planted a bunch of seedlings I started a bunch of seedlings of chili peppers and they were in little little paper pots and I transplanted them here and the slugs ate them so they were down to just little stumps and I'm to my surprise they're still leafing out and they're surviving I am so so surprised so that was this is basically my second sowing of chili pepper seeds and this one was the only one that made it in this bed from the original seeds and I, as you can see is like <laughs> five times bigger than those and a few times bigger than that one so but I think this is its sister plant not not a hundred percent and because I had to transplant them out just kind of random to keep those seedlings alive after the snails ate them some of the labels are there not all of them are labeled so when they come up if they're a yellow long chili I'll know that it's primarily a banana pepper or if it's, um, you know, like a different shape or whatnot, um, different colors, because I had the um, Italian kind and some kind of hybrid and some kind of pretty one that had several colors. So I'll kind of generally know what they are. Um, and then let's pan over here. This is my 
dragon roll chili pepper oh my goodness I just left these chilies on here because they were small and they turned red already so I'll have to pluck those and there's a green one there and I did look um, so the dragon roll pepper is part of the shishito family of peppers so it's wrinkled and it looks the same almost and it's about the same level of spice now this here is a habanero and it is taking forever to it has tons of flowers but it, I haven't seen any fruit here's a bell pepper I grew and then some tomatoes so things are things are coming up in due time I may have started some of these things too late so I had these tomatoes and some chili peppers in here that I had transplanted from the paper pots that the slugs had eaten and there oh yay that chili pepper made it I don't think the other one made it <laughs> but it's okay so I'm hoping that it'll grow and I don't know if it'll ha have time to make me fruit this year but one can only hope and here is my corn this is my second plot of corn and I also have corn row over there on the other side um, these are looking nice and tall haven't tasseled yet and nice and healthy I probably need to feed it with something but um, the way that I have things right now it's difficult to feed them to fertilize them um, I'm kind of watering things with the hose and I I used up all my um, rainwater that were in troughs and that would have been easy to pour fertilizer into and then like um, hand water everything but I ran out of that water so now it's hard to fertilize things unless I do it even more primitively one bucket at a time so over there I still have a couple surviving peppers the rest had died like I said because of the snails and slugs so that was a lot of work I guess wasted but lesson learned don't do it this way because this, the slugs are just voracious oh isn't that such a beautiful perfect sunflower it just bloomed recently so it's fresh and nice and it's basically a sunflower that I planted right next to my chicken coop run and it kind of fell over because it got real tall and there aren't many supports in that corner where it's growing but that's okay um, the borge came back this was originally borge way so there's a ton of borge and I just treat it as a weed now because it grows so easily and it reseeds so quickly and easily that um, I don't even have to worry about you know losing the plant because as soon as I pull out a plant I'll let it grow and bloom and let it bring around bees and then what I'll do is I'll pluck it out and I'll just throw it in the chicken run and the chickens will have it the leaves and stuff and they'll just grow more and more um, but once you give it the chance to flower then it'll be able to reseed so that's what I do I just let it grow itself um, so there's the other batch and um, basically I just pulled up all the the boards that fell over because of the rains and then I hilled all the soil to the edge and then I made two two hills and I stuck in the corn seedlings and this is the first batch of seedlings as opposed to the other one so this is much taller this is about three and a half feet tall maybe four feet tall these um, corn and they haven't oh they have it started to tassel <gasps> I didn't even notice that um, so it's kind of hard to walk through and I was gonna even plant one more row of corn here but thank goodness I didn't because I, I know I'm going to have to like kind of get in there or something. But you're supposed to like um, shake these once it tassels out even further so that you can have 
more corn hopefully and here is a volunteer um what is this plant called it has like um the seed heads over here and it readily seeds itself well i haven't seen many of these this year in my garden and i thought i got rid of all the seeds because they, they reseed themselves but i would just let these grow i would you can eat them too like um in a salad and whatnot gosh what is it called i cannot remember um i also throw it into the chicken coop and the chicken run and the chickens love to eat the leaves as well as well as the pro very high protein um seed portion mm. amaranth oh my gosh it took me forever to remember the name amaranth okay so there's another sunflower there's some um watermelons growing down there i have two two watermelons and then a crenshaw melon way back there and i believe a cucumber or another melon but just kind of growing things gently using as much space while i'm sitting inside when it's you know too hot or too mosquito-y out then I'll think about where to plant things so hopefully I get a lot of crops as all this stuff is late growing when I'm watching that other people have have been harvesting several rounds of tomatoes and stuff already and it was a little bit disappointing but at the same time I feel I feel happy because I have all this greenery so it's quite lush I try to grow things everywhere I don't know I try my best oh and I transplanted some uh, watermelons here as well so hopefully they pop up and grow tall this this area doesn't get as much Sun as I would like to have them um, grow in but that I found enough where I can put them and all along here, I have my Kajari melons. These were the first uh, melon seeds that I stuck in the ground. And I'm so happy they are they are blooming. I haven't seen any fruit. So I'm still hoping. And here's a Malabar spinach growing amongst the three Kajari melons, which are growing up my garden enclosure. And here are one two so those are the two cucamelons there is a third cucamelon inside the enclosure I'm gonna have them climb up this way and then whatever bees pollinate they'll kind of hopefully pollinate them kind of because they're close together the same the same variety the cucamelon and there might be some crossbreeding with this Kajari I'm not sure I hope not but maybe I'll have some weird delicious uh, fruit from the seeds. I'm not sure. I, I may not collect the seeds. I don't know yet. And here are my wild um, I think they were called oh my goodness hyssop or something like that and it's finally starting to flower. It, it grew so tall but it's because it's shady over here I think. I don't think they normally get this tall but they're starting to um, make flowers at the top. So hopefully it'll be really scented nicely over here. I'm hoping. And here is a melon, I believe. I forget what variety. Um, I always think that I'm going to remember what I planted. And unfortunately, I have no idea what it's going to be. And I hope this little basil will survive. Um, I'm not sure. It's struggling. And then here are two other basils. And then over here is another melon. Don't remember what kind. Could be a cucumber. Um, just not remembering. And then my beans, my pole beans, are starting to climb the enclosure. So they're kind of going around going around the fencing here and I am so happy it's finally growing I think um, I had some beans that grew at different stages and what I'm thinking is they needed the heat they needed a certain amount of heat temperature wise in order to start 
climbing and they didn't have that until recently. And here's a melon that, uh, Kajari melon that I planted over here. So some of these were supposed to go to my siblings. However, they said they um, didn't have space or time to plant them and I didn't want them to die. So I just planted them in my garden. And so I had to kind of scramble and look for different places to put them because they're vining growing upwards type of plants. And I don't have too much um, horizontal space, so I had to think of ways to grow them vertically. Hi friends. So I wanted to show you how incredible the sunflower is. So this is the second sunflower that bloomed in my garden. And now it is, it's been here for several months and it started fading. The petals fell off as it's heating up. And I've cut off some of the, some of the stems, some of the deadheads. And to my surprise, and it shouldn't be, it started to make new blooms in the crooks of the plant. So all the deadheads have been chopped off. And it's making new blooms still in the secondary and tertiary uh, parts of the, where the leaves come out. So it's making even more flowers and more flowers as it goes down the plant. So there's another little bud there. So it's really amazing. It's making so many more flowers than, um, than it needs to. So it's a really wonderful flower. And I, like, I shouldn't be surprised because last year I I had a sunflower that did this and I took the very flower, the biggest flower from that sunflower and I kept the seeds and I grew from that one. So, so the fact that it keeps making flowers, however small, um, they do grow. So it'll be a tiny little bud and then the bud gets bigger and bigger until it makes a flower that's a decent size. So. Um, I've been chopping off the tops because I need more sun to come into my enclosure. The sun's coming from the right side right now and it's kind of beaming into the left area, this left side, but the sunflower is kind of in the way and by, of course by noon everything's got sun, but I was opening up more sunlight to my plants and especially peppers. Peppers need the sunlight. So, but what a wonderful sunflower. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember what I planted that year that I have the sunflower heads from, but I still have more seeds and I've been putting seeds into the ground, especially I wanted the summer and the fall to have um, to have some red sunflowers. So I have the red sun sunflower seeds that I've put into the into the ground and direct sowed. So here's my Kajari melon and it's growing so nicely. It's so lush. It's the first melon that I grew this year. Directly into the ground I just stuck three seeds in this corner here and I that was what I envisioned exactly for it to climb up here in this corner. And so between the Kajari and the sunflower, it was providing lots of shade. Um, but now it's shading out my plants over here. But if I get rid of the sunflower over time, it'll slowly add sun to this area while the Kajari grows up in this corner. So um, it's kind of a mixture of sun protection and... Um, and as a sun barrier so on the one hand it's not providing as much sun but at the same time I'm going to be cutting some away so it will be providing some sun if that makes any sense so that was what I wanted to share in this video so friends I watered my plants two days ago and now um, it's two days later and I did have a little zucchini and look at how big it got you just skipped 
a day and then it grows so quickly so I'm gonna have to harvest it and look around carefully to see how big it is I only have the one plant because I know zucchinis um, make a lot of fruit it was too difficult to get my pruning shear in there to get it so I just kind of twisted it carefully and I got it good so it's quite big bigger than I wanted but that's fine it's still good um, and then let's see how many more are in there there's a little one right there and I know there's another one that I saw oh yes it's down there um, okay it's still small yet it's right there so I've got three so far I believe so yeah I'm just gonna leave it alone now let it grow guys it's so crazy things are growing all around me without my knowledge and I'm trying not to break plants because when I try to um, put these shoots up into the enclosure and try to let it climb sometimes they break the branches but here's my first Kajari melon I just noticed it today how cute it's got striations and speckles it's so adorable